In our morning rounds, heart myths. The facts are clear. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in this country. One in four people die as a result. But part of the risk comes from misconceptions. Dr. Tara Narula is a cardiologist at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, first myth let's go to. It's easy to tell if you're having a heart attack. Absolutely not true all the time. Mm -hmm. We all see the movie images of people clutching their chest and falling over with chest pain. And sometimes that is exactly how it presents. But many times people can have more subtle feelings of chest pain. They can have shortness of breath, fatigue, lightheadedness, breaking out into a cold sweat, feeling dizzy. So the important thing is don't ignore your symptoms and don't self-diagnose. For instance, don't say you have heartburn and start popping Tums instead of going to see your doctor. Mm -hmm. Another myth, don't worry about it until you're middle-aged. Absolutely, also not correct. So people start to develop heart disease as early as the age of 18. And so what you're doing in your 20s and 30s to your body eventually catches up to you in your 50s and 60s. It's like a pipe that becomes clogged slowly, slowly over time. And then ultimately it comes completely completely clogged and all of the flow stops going down the pipe. That's what the arteries and the vessels are like. So you feel the episode of chest pain and heart attack when the pipe gets clogged, but you're laying the plaque down over years. Listen, both my parents died of heart attack, so I know a lot of myths about this disease, including one that smoking only hurts your lungs, not your heart. Yeah. Smoking is the most important reversible risk factor for heart disease. Mm -hmm. We know that the benefits of quitting smoking on the heart start as quickly as you stop smoking. And it doesn't matter how long you've smoked or how much you've smoked. So that by the end of one year after you stop smoking, you've reduced your risk by 50%. And at the end of 15 years, your risk is that same as the level of someone who never smoked at all. What about the idea that you could take vitamins or supplements and that would lower your heart attack risk. That's a great misconception. People come in all the time with bags of supplements. There's been no evidence to show that supplements can prevent heart disease. What about all those fish oil pills or that people are taking? There's no evidence to show that. It, we use fish oil in certain cases for people with very high triglyceride levels. But overall, it's a misconception and many of these supplements can be harmful. Uh, there's one last one, which is sex can increase the risk. <laughs> Why did you point to me? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you had a question. I just wanted to make sure you got in a question. I, what I were you do. Gonna ask? Sex can increase the risk of a heart attack. Great question. So sexual, <laughs> <laughs> sexual activity is associated with a very low risk of a heart attack, usually in the first two hours after yeah. sexual intercourse. But overall, for people with heart disease, the risk is very low, especially if you're a low-risk person with heart disease. Yeah. If you can exercise and do a low level of exercise, sexual activity should be safe. If you're you're intermediate or high risk, you probably want to talk to your doctor first. So bottom line, sex is good. Sex is good. <laughs> heart attack, no but heart attack. Heart attack, sex no good. good. Just one good. quick question about all of this. I think exercise may be part of the answer and eating well. Mm -hmm. But beyond those two important things, what can you do to minimize the risk of heart attack? Well, you want to think about all the things that play into it. So you want to control your blood pressure, exercise as you talked about, right. keep your weight down, don't smoke, drink in moderation, and know your cholesterol numbers. All right. Dr. Tara Thank Narula. you. Thank you. Thank you.